before we start learning about ratios, we need to know why we need to learn about ratios. So take a look at these ratios in real life. What is a quesocotalus? I don't even know if I'm saying that right. But let me tell you, it was the largest flying animal. Let me say that again. The thing I'm about to show you would fly in the skies. You'll understand what I'm saying when you see the picture. But the ratio is what we're looking at today. So I'm going to give you a ratio between the average human and a small quesocotalus. The ratio of their height is 1.8 to 8. And the width, that means like the average human arm span is 1.8 meters, but the width of their wings is 10 meters. But this bird, man, we're talking about meters here. If you're just looking at these numbers here, maybe it's not going to mean much to you. But I want you to look at this picture. And let me say that again. This thing could fly. If I told you its measurements, it wouldn't be that big of a deal. But if I tell you the ratio, you can start to see its sheer size. I'm so glad we didn't live at the same time as this thing, because I think I might freak out a little bit. This thing is flying over my head in my backyard, right? Imagine this thing lands on your back fence. Here is a graph that shows not only the measurements, but the ratio of their wingspan to a human and their height or I guess their length to a human, especially when their head is stretched out when they're flying. How frightening would that thing be? Let me give you another example. The Rosetta Stone Comet. Well, if you haven't heard about the Rosetta Stone Comet, there was a 10-year mission to land a probe on the comet to study it. On August 6, 2014, the probe arrived at its target. The probe was able to remain there for like two years and it gathered all this data for scientists. It was, I mean, honestly, it was pretty cool. We got a lot of the things we know about comets from that probe. But you can't understand how large that comet is until we talk about its ratio. The Rosetta Stone was 4.1 miles long. So to understand how big 4.1 miles is, I'm going to give you a ratio that compares downtown Los Angeles to the comet. So the ratio we're going to talk about is the length of downtown compared to the comet. Are you ready? Now walking in downtown Los Angeles is like walking in a calm straight line on nice pretty sidewalks. When you're walking on a comet, 4.1 miles is not so straight and nice. This image helps you understand why ratios are so important. Look at that comet. All right. Here's another ratio in real life. Megalodon. Megalodon is the largest shark to have ever existed and one of the largest fish. A megalodon could be between like 15 and 18 meters long. Numbers are numbers. But ratios let you know how that thing compares to other things. And in the case of Megalodon, we can use the ratio of a human to a Megalodon. And in that ratio, we're talking the same thing, 1.8, except not 1.8 of a human, to 18 meters of a Megalodon. If I can say an average human is 1.8 meters from foot to head, then we can say a Megalodon from the tip of its nose to the end of its fin is 18 meters. Don't be scared about what I'm about to show you. Now, according to most scientists, Megalodon has long been extinct. Well, sort of. This photograph was supposedly taken around World War I. And whether it's a fake or not, and whether Megalodon is still out there or not, this photograph is a perfect example of why ratios are so important. Do you see this dorsal fin right here? And you see this tail fin right here? If this dorsal fin and this tail fin is from the same creature, then based on the ratio between the length of the dorsal fin and the tail, and the ratio of its length in relation to where that U-boat is, or submarine as we call it today, there is only one logical conclusion. The Megalodon was swimming next to that U-boat. Hmm. 
This photograph shows the same dorsal fin and tail taken from a different angle. I think the U-boats were all being serviced that day and they're all taking pictures of the soldiers on top. Maybe, you know, you're going to send some home to their families. Look at me in the war. I don't know. But no one really noticed the background of these photos until years later. You see how somebody measured the dorsal fin and the tail fin? And now we have a U-boat that creates a ratio for it. If I just saw this dorsal fin and the tail fin out, then I wouldn't know how big it was. But once I put the U-boat next to it, I have a ratio. And using that ratio, I can measure how long the U-boat is. I mean, they're still around. Submarines are still around. I, and I have a person standing on the edge there, so I can compare to a person. And it makes me realize that that fish, whatever's in that water, must have been about... 15 to 18 meters long. Ratios help us understand that. Now, maybe you're going to say, oh, this is a hoax. Oh, whatever. Th that's not the point. The point is here. Ratios help me solve that. Um, the last thing I want to talk about when we're talking about ratios is preview this idea to you of a unit ratio. A unit ratio is very helpful because it tells you how much of something to one of another thing. So if I'm looking at, say, the population of the United States, and I compare that unit ratio to another country, it's a lot easier to take these big, giant numbers into something that's, you know, a little more understandable. The ratio of the United States population to the Chinese population is big, giant numbers. Like, it's hard to understand that. It's, in fact, 328,200,000 to... 1,393,000,000. Sometimes the number's that large, it's kind of hard to wrap your brain around it. They're just too big. So this is where ratios are very useful. The unit ratio of the United States population to the Chinese population is one to four. That means for every one person living in America, there are four people living in China. That makes it a little bit more helpful to understand. Check out this graph that represents the world populations in percents. Percents are like a kind of ratio. Almost 20% of the entire world lives in China. Another 20% live in India. That means nearly 50% of the world is China or India. Because half the world is either in China or in India. When we think of the United States having 328 million people, it seems like a large number before you look at this chart. The United States is barely 4% of the entire world. That's awfully small. Th this graph here is organized by individual countries mostly. But you see this gray area right here? These countries are less than 1% of the world population separately. But if I put them all together, individual little countries, that's about 30% of the world living in small countries. It's pretty interesting to compare the world's population in ratios to land mass. Because I know that the United States is a very large country. If you're including Texas and Alaska and Montana, some of our states are larger than some of those countries listed there. If you compare that to India, it shows a completely different picture of the population. Ratio of land mass to people, or ratio of people to the world. This is just a little introduction video to start your brain thinking of not just numbers, but how numbers relate to other numbers. And we call those ratios. We're going to start studying ratios in order to understand large astronomical units and very small units, like things even microscopes can't see, chromosomes, acids and DNA. Just, you know, try not to have nightmares about Quetzalcoatlus or Megalodon. I'll see you guys later.